Hey, I'm Dante. And hey, I'm Dana. And welcome to the Dante Show. <laughs> It's your boy Kwame, the man with the plan behind the stands. Before we get into it, do me a favor. If you are on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, hit that share button so people can see what the fuss is all about. Don't worry if it's the end of the show. They can catch the replay. We're trying to spread the love instead of spreading the lies, y'all. All right, let's get into it. Did you know that our boy Dante Morrison is a best-selling author? Do you like smut? Yes, smut. Well, these books are filled with it. Check out The End of the Rainbow, followed by the sequel, Yesterday Clarified. You can get them on Amazon, or if you are tired of giving Jeff Bezos the time of day, you can visit www.dantemorrison.com, where, in fact, you will find out more about the motivational, inspirational, hilarious host known as Dante, Mr. Morrison, if you're nasty. He is not only the host of TDS, he is a public health advocate, motivational speaker, and community change agent. Articles, interviews, blogs, podcasts, vlogs, and more. You name it, and Dante has done it. Speaking of vlogs, have you subscribed to the Dante Show YouTube? Now every villager should be subscribed. The more the channel grows, the bigger TDS messaging becomes. It's really simple. Go to www youtube.com forward slash Dante Morrison. And also, did you want to be a guest on the Dante show or do you want to book Dante or Dana on your platform? Stop. Don't inbox him. Don't email him or even call him. You know what you need to do? Go ahead and open your handy dandy smartphone or Wi-Fi enabled device and send an email to info at pyromedianetwork.com and request your presence on the show. It's 2021, y'all, and Dante and Dana has got management. So, let's conduct business. Speaking of management, The Dante Show is produced by Pyromedia Network. We are a Black-owned digital marketing and video production agency helping businesses and brands make an impact with their message. We also help businesses navigate what we call the biggest communication shift in over 500 years, social media. So, if you have a business, brand, or influence, and you want to take it to the next level, contact us today. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you on the next. Boom. What's up, Dana? What's up? What's up? What's up, fam? Bam. Happy Monday to you, my brother. Happy Monday to the village. We are here. We are back. We are live. We are in effect with another round of the Dante Show. Y'all already know who I am. Hey, Pam. Love you, Pam. Y'all already know who I am. I am Dante Morrison. I'm the host, and I will be nothing without my phenomenal sidekick, partner in crime, the man, the myth, the legend, the Dana. See? <laughs> What's up, Titan? What's up? <laughs> we finally got rid of them. No, no, nah, nah, they they still coming in. They still hey, sit down, sit down. I, 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 I love you too. I love you too. I lo I lo it's yeah. I love you too. No, don't call me. Don't call me. Don't call me. Uh, exactly, 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 exactly. I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What up? What up? What up? What's up? Um, How was your weekend? It was cool. It was actually cool, man. Um, had a little hit this weekend out of town, so 
Um, it was cool. Um, and then uh, today was like crazy, bro. Like Mondays are always wild, man. At work, yeah. You you sound you sound whoop. You sound like you like yeah. really got off work. You know, like you just exhausted. But I get it. I get it. Mondays are, I would say, the best days, but hey, we don't know. What's up, Malik? What's up, Walt B? What's up, Fam Bam? Hey, y'all, so make sure to check us out hey, on man. YouTube. If you're watching us on Facebook, go on to YouTube and check us out. You know, it's free to subscribe. All you got to do is go to youtube.com backslash Dante Morris and hit that subscribe button, and you are officially a part of the village, all right? And since you're a part of the village, you already know that every episode of the Dante Show is about being black. Black 24-7, black history, black pride, black legacy, black icons, black everything, and today is no different. So without further ado, we got a great show tonight with a phenomenal guest. I don't want to hold it up. Let's get into our Black History Spotlight. Like, Kwame, let's make that happen. Boom. Y'all ready for this? Something different. Are we going to talk about the Niagara Movement? Here we go. It's, it's a moment in Black history. In 1905, a group of prominent Black intellectuals led by W.E.B. Du Bois met in Erie, Ontario, near Niagara Falls, all right, to form an organization calling for civil and political rights for African Americans. With this comparatively aggressive approach to combating racial discrimination and segregation, the Niagara Movement served as a forerunner to the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, and the Civil Rights Movement. All right, peep this. At their initial meeting, the founding members of the Niagara Movement adopted a constitution and bylaws and drafted a declaration of principles that dedicated the group to fighting for political and social equality for African Americans. We refuse to allow the impression to remain that the Negro American assents to inferiority, is submissive under oppression, and apologetic before insults. The declaration read in part, come on here, come persistent, on. persistent manly agitation is the way to liberty, and toward this goal, the Niagara movement has started to and asked the cooperation of all men of all races. But by 1906, the Niagara Movement had grown to some 170 members in 34 states. That August, the organization held its first public meeting in Harpers Ferry, Virginia, on the campus of Storer College. Its members chose the meeting site for its historical significance as the site of John Brown's anti-slavery raid in 1859. Store was also founded as a Baptist school with a mission to educate formerly enslaved people. All right, peep this. Though a 1907 meeting at Fauna Hall in Boston attracted as many as 800 members, support for the Niagara movement soon began to dwindle. Then, in the wake of a major race riot in Springfield, Illinois, in August 1908, Dubois joined other prominent activists, including Mary White Ovington, in calling for a new civil rights organization with both black and white members. Okay? Let's close this out. The result was the NAACP, founded in February 1909 in New York City. Though the Niagara Movement held its final meeting in 1908 and formally disbanded in 1911, the majority of its members will continue to fight for civil and political rights for African Americans with the NAACP. Village, talk about getting education, know your history. That was the Niagara Movement, so now you know what sparked the NAA CP. And I guarantee you a lot of black folks had no idea what triggered, sparked, ignited, built the NAACP. But now you know and you are better for it. So give yourself yeah. an applause for being educated on tonight. And that is our Black History Year update. Boom, boom, boom. I love it. <laughs> yes, sir. So listen. This is your first time here. We are glad to have you. And tonight's guest, before we get into the Dana drop, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the double standard experienced by women when it comes to sexual expression. All right, we're gonna talk about the double standard experienced by women when it comes to sexual expression, and we're gonna ask the question: Have women become too sexually liberated, or is there more room to grow? All right, so all my queens out there, all my queens that showing all your things, is that sexual liberation? Is that what we should be doing? Or y'all still got some ways to go? All right, so get ready. We're going to tackle that right after the Dana drop. Dana, take it away, man. It's all about you. Hey, 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 y'all know what time it is, ladies. Y'all know what time it is. <laughs> it's time for the Dana drop. Boom, let's go. Hey, 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 
Calm down, calm down. Hey, I can't talk. I gotta do something in a few minutes. I gotta do something. In, okay, okay. Hey, what's up, people? What's happening? Hey, God bless us to get through this weekend. We woke up this morning. Tell somebody you love them. Tell them you love them. Check it out. Do us a favor. Go over to youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. Hit that subscribe button. Like I said, y'all subscribe to Vag Magazine, Jet Magazine. Uh, some of y'all still getting, uh, what's that called? Uh, uh, something Hunt. Something Hunt. Family, I don't know. But y'all subscribing to everything and don't even use it. All right? So check it out. Listen, we're going to talk about being appreciative of the little things. All right? The little things, we got to be appreciating these little things that happen because all a lot of us tend to not pay attention to the little stuff that happens in our life. We always wait for that big thing to pay attention to. And the little things are what matters. You know, whether you missed your bus, stubbed your toe, lost your keys, broke up with somebody, or just having a bad hair day, paying attention to little positive things in life will help you shift your focus away from the negative things. Take time and take a moment to yourself and appreciate the little things that you may normally overlook, like holding the door for a stranger, sharing a smile with a friend, going to lunch with a favorite sandwich uh, special, paying for somebody's lunch. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Little things. Be appreciative for little things. They teach us crucial life lessons. They teach us crucial life lessons. It's the little things in your life that will reveal your likes and dislikes your strengths and weaknesses, and your needs and desires. If you pay attention to them, you can learn a lot about yourself. I'm going to say that again. If you pay attention to the little things, you can learn a lot about yourself and how the world works and it benefits you. Then you can use what you've learned and, and use that and work towards the bigger things. So when big things come along, you can take all of those little things that you've learned and put them together and, and tackle those big things, all right? It strengthens relationships, friendships, whether we're talking about significant others, friends, family, customers, coworkers. <laughs> little things strengthen relationships. Yeah, big things matter every once in a while, but it's the little things that keep your friendships, relationships, and all of that stuff alive with your friends and your coworkers and your family. It's the little things that keep that stuff alive. It leaves us with some of the most important moments. You never thought about that. Hmm. I'm thinking about the big thing that happened years ago. What about the little stuff that happened years ago? When you fully, when you fully appreciate the little things in your life, you can be extremely meaningful and valuable to you. Think of all the moments in your life that you gave a warm hug to someone. Or you went out and you were you got, you came home from work or school and you smelled your mom's cooking, you know stuff like that. A lot of people can't smell the cooking. A lot of people don't have the sense of sight and 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 the hearing and stuff like that. It's the little things that we should be thankful for, and they lead us to bigger things in life. It's not every day that you land your dream job. It's not every day that you get that record deal. It's not every day that you could go out and buy whatever car you want. It's not every day you can go out and buy whatever house you want, okay? But if you learn to appreciate the little things, the big things will come. Thank God for that apartment. Appreciate your apartment. No, you don't have a five-bedroom house. No, you don't have a Bentley outside. Or some of us don't even have a car outside at all. We're Ubering and we're, we're, we're lifting everywhere. Or we ride no scooters. We're catching a bus and we ride no scooters. Appreciate that. Because you never know, you may get blessed with a car the next day. You Appreciate it. Appreciate the little things in life. Because again, it gets you prepared for the bigger things that come. I say this, God's not going to bless you with something big if you can't be a good steward over the little things that you have. Learn to love that. Just thank him for what you have right now. And I guarantee you that the doors are going to open and the blessings are going to pour out and things are just going to be falling in your lap like nothing. Trust me. And if you don't believe me, tell them how you feel, bro, because they don't believe me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> That's the Dana drop, and I'm out. Peace.
I know, I know y'all appreciate me. I know y'all appreciate Dante. You know what I'm saying? It's just two brown brothers. Hey, all right, baby. All right, baby. I love you. All right. Hey, they, they really love that drop, man. They love that one. So, yeah, I love them too. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Good job, dog. Good job. Good job. Jeez. All right, y'all. So we back. We're about to bring our guests on tonight. So go ahead and invite your invite your friends, your family, your cousins, your loved ones into the Dante show. I posed the question in the comment section, the thread, and the question said, have women become too sexually liberated, or is there room for for, for grow? To room to grow. All right. So Keem, I don't know who's screaming. They out there somewhere. <laughs> have women become too sexually liberated, or is there more room to grow? So, ladies, what do you think? Have y'all become too sexually liberated, too over the top? Y'all taking this too far? Fellas, what do y'all think? All right. So tonight's guest, we're gonna discuss this and break it all down. Tonight's guest is Crystal Bublin, known for her quick wit, hilarious social commentary, and strong improv skills. Bubs has truly learned to live in the moment. After a 12-year career as an on-air radio personality, she wrote, she relocated to Los Angeles to pursue her dream of acting. Upon arrival, Bub's first stop was the second city in the Hollywood, in Hollywood, where she performed in the weekly sketch shows TMI and Apocalypse Now or Later. Her improv skills and hilarious delivery led to her being cast in True TV's You Can Do Better, Issa Rae's Awkward Black Girl, and Oxygen Celebrities Undercover. Hey. Currently, Crystal is the host of Black People Don't Do Improv, which is featured on the Camp On Stage Studios app. Featured in ad campaigns for Apple, T-Mobile, and Inspire Sleep, a panelist on TV One's Unsung, and performs with the sketch comedy team Black Verse. You can also check out Crystal's online store, Bubbling Brand, at bubblingbrand.com. Village, give it up for our guest for tonight, the incomparable Crystal Bubbling. Right. That's not, that's up? all I can do. Hey, that's it. Right, right. That's it. From the waist down, you sitting still. Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Ah, ah. I'm that auntie. I'm that auntie age. This is my move right here. Ah. Crystal, that's welcome it. to the show. Welcome to the Thank show. Thank you so much, Dante. Thank you so much, Dana. Great yeah. to talk with you guys. We're glad to have you. Glad to have you. So listen, let me just tell folks, I, I got hip to Crystal because we have a mutual friend and the friend had made this comment about, you know, women and their expressions of themselves sexually and appearance and whatnot. And Crystal went ham in a very eloquent fashion on the thread. And I instantly inboxed her and said, oh my God, I don't know you, but I love you. You're my best friend. Come on my show. <laughs> and let's talk about it because it was it was such a hot topic. And, and from there, here we are at the Dante show. So Chris, before we get to it, listen, let the folks know, you know, where are you originally from and what's been your journey to, to Cali? Uh, I'm from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, Born in Long Island, raised in New Jersey. Um, went to HBCU. I worked in radio for a long time. And then I came out here for a job after I got laid off from radio. Uh, I came up here for a job on a TV show and got fired a week later. And then I've been stuck what? in LA. I got a you friend who claims they're from Jersey. I'm sure they're gonna chime in. They claim they're from Jersey. I'm sure they're gonna. They left Jersey. I mean, when they it's was, a J all day, baby. Hey, they left Jersey when they was. They left Jersey when they was two years old, though. You can See? always come home. What I tell you, look, Jersey you and I. You can always come home, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so Crystal, you did you you had the job Yay. on the TV show? Yeah, I I was I was doing casting for a cooking show. Uh -huh. And I had met the casting producer working on a show when I was living in North Carolina and uh -huh. we stayed in touch. And then when she got back out here, uh, she called me. She's like, I'd love to have you on my show if you could get here. And, you know, my family was like, yo, it's time to go to L.A. Like, whatever. Borrowed some money, took four days to drive across the country, get up here. I think the week's going good. I'm, I sit in a chair to get my hair done one day. I open the, uh, our group email to just, you know, on the weekend, do a little something, something. And I said, we need to be on the phone to fire Crystal. I was like, 
Hold on, girl. Don't break nothing because I, I might not have the money. I might not have a direct deposit for you wait, just wait, yet. Wait. Don't, don't, no. Put that connect line down. I'll be right back. I got to make a phone call. Wow. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. And you, and you decided to just stay. Well, it was also like in February, March. And so it was still like 40 mm. degrees in New Jersey. And I it mean, was like 85 here. So I was like, well, you know. I mean. If I'm going to. If I'm going to struggle. No, yeah. I just, I'd rather struggle in the sun than struggle in the gray. And I love the gray. <laughs> like, I love the gray. Don't get me wrong. But. However, however that, that game hit different. You know, yeah. I get it. Well, I'm glad you stayed. I'm glad you stayed. Welcome to the West you Coast. Too. Thank you. you. Ten years. Ten years. Yep. Ten oh, years in March. Yeah. yeah, you about. Yeah, you about to. You about to be all the way to LA. Your accent gone. Everything. You about to lose all. Oh, that. that's when I. That's when I have to come home. Like I went home for six weeks uh, last year, and I came back. It just everything was like this. You know what I'm saying? Like everything. Like I was Remy Ma when I came back or something. <laughs> <laughs> Go All the way in. up. It's crazy, son. That's crazy. I am mad. Get the All right, so we're gonna we gonna talk about we're gonna talk about women, you know, and 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 you know, sexual liberation and and women just being free to just be and all that kind mm. of stuff. So I got four questions mm. and we're going we gonna to dive into that. Village, we need y'all to chime in on these questions as well. Y'all know how we do with these questions. So Village, y'all get your friends up in here. You on YouTube watching, Facebook watching. Here comes question number one. Go ahead, Kwame. How do you define sexual liberation? Uh, well, you know, I think, I think it's being just open to whatever sexually without fear or shame or, or guilt in a consensual situation. <laughs> Keyword being consensual. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you say, um, Dana? Is, is that like, um, this is a question for her. Um, would you say, is, is sexual liberation, would you say as far as the way someone dresses or the way they carry themselves or partners or what have you, would you say Lizzo? What, what would you say about Lizzo? Because you said expressing yourself without, I love being, Lizzo. without being in fear and stuff like that. Because she would throw on a two-piece thong in a second and go to Ralph's. Mm -hmm. Baby, I just got, no, I don't I don't think so. Uh, Ralph's? Yeah, she would. <laughs> and walk down the ice cream aisle. Yes, yeah, she would. Okay. Um, I think I think that's Okay. I, I love Lizzo though. So you're not gonna, like, it doesn't bother me because it, it's really all in our minds, all in our bodies. You'll see right. an ad in, mm -hmm. um, you'll see an ad in JC Penny and it'll be like a, a white woman with these honey blonde, big waves in her hair, some sunglasses pulled up. She'll be in a bikini and a, a sh kind of sheerish cover up with some like right. sandals right. at the grocery store. And it'll just be like in your head, I'm like, oh, she probably just came from the beach. It's just no big deal. Right. But you put a Lizzo in the same situation right. and a Megan, then it's, right. why are you showing all this? Exactly. Skin? You're exactly. a whore. Think right. of the children. <laughs> Right, right, right. Exactly. Like when she went to the basketball game. Now, like you said, if the European American would have did that, it would have been fine. But when she went and wore what she wore, it was an issue. It was a problem. I don't think it was. I don't even think it was. It was that she wore. I think it's all about body size too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, that's 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 what came with that. That's it been like okay. And let me let me catch what Bridget Paku just said. Bridget said, "Yeah, being aware that you have dominion over your body!" Exclamation points. You know, mm -hmm. and and being unashamed about it. You know, right, right. Lizzo don't give two cares that's about what, what I'm saying. Think, she don't you know, care. Which, which is yo. powerful. Which is powerful. But then at the same time, when we talk about sexual liberation, should there be boundaries of what one does in public? Right, Crystal. 
Should there be boundaries? I mean, I feel like nudity is 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 one of them, but only because more so is that's like very dangerous. Okay, you know, because like, could you imagine like you just, we just walking around nude, and you walking outside one day it's raining, you hit the somebody hits the corner and splash water like dirt road water all over your exposed bits. Like, I feel like things like you're really you. open to to catching flame. If you're naked, clothes at least give you a layer. So I, okay. I feel like nudity should definitely be a boundary. I just don't feel like anything anything that you would make in a small, extra small, if, if it's fine in a small, extra small, it needs to be okay in a triple four X. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I got okay. you. I got you. Okay. okay. Because how many times have we seen Rihanna's breasts? Well, How many yeah. times and a little sheer a sheer top? Yeah, right. Same right. thing. Lizzo mm -hmm. had a hole cut in the butt of her t-shirt, and she had on like boy shorts, and was like, "Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know." Yeah. So, yeah. and that's what I, I take us back to what Dante said. I think uh, bodies they, they they get offended or they say something because of the size, and it's like, well, why can't she do it? She did it, so why can't she yeah. do it? Me personally, I like. I like stuff to be left to the imagination. I don't want to see everything. I don't want to see how we say in church. I don't want to see all your ministry when I say hi. You know, leave something, you know, for the revival, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> you mean. know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't, that's just me. I'm attracted to more, you know, you could be beautiful in some sw a sweatsuit or some basketball shorts hooping. That's yeah, just make, make a list with a ponytail. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm, that's yeah. what I like. Right. You know, I don't, yeah. But yeah, all those adages, uh, all those 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 are nice. Right. I mean, those just, are it enhances, nice. It enhances in theory, what's already there. But I'm sure if we went in these people's Pornhub searches, it ain't. What's uh, what's Pornhub? Yeah, oh, what right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, Casey Black. All right, all right, everybody. Yo, doing that, huh? Okay, you know what we doing? I've never this heard. What we doing? Is that what is that? Is that like? <laughs> is that what we doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is that, is that like? Lizzo, is that like Amazon? Lizzo, Lizzo ain't leaving nothing to the imagination. Yeah. But if we go in on. your searches, it says specifically. Uh, women four feet tall with three toes, baby oil, a little bit of tar, feather, and some olive oil and garlic salt, or, or some in, just insane shit. Like, touche. I will give you that. Touche. I don't. Touché. I don't. Yeah, you're I don't right. Come, don't, I don't yeah. come out of my. I don't come out of my house and what I wear, or what I do, uh, based on your opinion of me because i don't like, like i don't know you I, you've already formulated yeah. your opinion of what i should be so the fact that i'm not that like why do i why do i care who's lost I that? Do think, yeah, i do think that's all that all boils down to the comfortability yeah and i think society has made people not feel comfortable in their own skin you know, and make them be like, well, I can't wear this. I can't wear that because society is going to judge me, yada, yada, yada. And I think when it comes to boundaries, you know, of course, we're talking about, yeah, circumstance, of course. We're not going to just go to a children's party, you know, with, with nipples hanging on, on and, and your butt cheeks out, would not. Well, I would. Hold, hold on, because I saw that comment. Somebody said, don't be a Nikki or Megan at a children's party. First of all, whom, or whom's video ever, vixen. Or, or a video vixen at a church party. First of all, Nikki about to be a video vixen at a child's birthday party. This woman done married a convicted rapist. Like, what do you, what do you, so, so Megan Thee Stallion shows up in a body con dress to I, drop I, off I, I, I mean, I'll be at that party. She could bring like, that to Timmy's party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She could bring and that, it, she could it, drop off a cake to my son's party and that, that'll be fine. All, and all and all of these <laughs> and, and all of these comparisons are comparisons people have to what these women do as their jobs. That's their jobs. Touché. You know I what I mean? The, yeah, I got you. That's yeah. not when you get a, when you leave the call center and go put your hair in a bun and go put on 
you know, your Nike basketball shorts and your slides and socks, and you walking around the house looking like the neighborhood drug dealer, that ain't got, we ain't, nobody's talking about how you just had a shirt and tie on, like what you was doing then. Like while you was at work, your name was Chuck, and then in the hood, you was Charles. So right. You Charles at work, and you Chuck in the hood. Megan no. this, hey, Megan Chuck, the Stallion. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Yeah. Why oh, would y'all okay. think Megan the Stallion is showing up to a kid's birthday party Doing the damn uh WAP choreography. <laughs> <laughs> that what is in your mind? No, I think, are... I think, and I think that's what Bridget is saying. Bridget is saying leave the job at the job, you know. But that's that's the whole boundary thing. I think yeah, there is, yeah. is boundaries when it comes. I know, Crystal, you wouldn't wear you wouldn't wear a a, a, a latex bodysuit to a two year old's birthday party, would you? Right, but I don't. But why would why would we think that Megan the Stallion or Nicki Minaj would? No, I don't think she was saying Megan, she said Megan or Nikki would don't put on Megan or Nikki's job attire to go to a kid's birthday party. Right. Not saying Megan or Nikki would do that, but I'm just saying, like you just said, we know that's their job. That's what that's, they do. I feel like, yeah, and yeah. I just feel like that's a given. I feel like people know like what's appropriate for what situation. Like, of course, you're not going to show up to a funeral in a body condom. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. I, you know, hey, but, some funerals I don't see online. I mean, I've seen some funerals. Damn, I've seen some I've funerals seen some online. Things. You live, you live in LA. You live in LA. I saw a dude today with just a blue Dragon Ball Z uh, wig on and it was just just that, like his outfit, he didn't have a costume or anything else on. He was just rocking this, and I'm like, and I guarantee that is not the strangest thing I'm gonna see in LA today. So that's why I'm just like, yeah, I don't think it would be appropriate to do something like that. But people, and I watch a lot of rom coms where they go to like crazy links to get the girl or whatever. It's just stupid. Right. People are wild. All right, well, let's ask the next question because it's going to float into that. Kwame, what's, what's the next one? What's the next one? All right, come on, Village. Here's the next question. It's coming. In terms of appearance, are Black women too hard on themselves? Yes, 100%. Why do you think that is, Crystal? I mean, I think it's conditioning. I think, you know, for years and years and years and decades and centuries, um, we've been devalued aesthetically. We've been treated as a last resort. Um, you know, people fetishize biracial children and biracial people and fairer skinned people. I mean, it, it's, it's just since the dawn of time. And uh, so I do think a lot of times we are too hard on ourselves, but I think a lot, I think that's people across the board. I think you're always your own worst critic. Do you think that the certain, like, you know, Dana brought up, you know, Lizzo, you know, which I think is a great example. Do you think artists like Lizzo or women like Lizzo that are living loud and in their truth and confident is, is breaking down a lot of those stigmas and fears and concerns about public opinion when it comes to how women just perceive themselves? I do. I do. Because I, I think with anything like when you with any type of representation, when you see yourself in someone else you you don't feel like the the odd person out and and you don't feel shame you know mm -hmm. you don't feel you don't feel shame you don't feel guilt when it's something that does not involve preying upon people i have to make that distinction because people would be like well what about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um i do think i absolutely do think uh she's she's helping and women like that but it's also the thing of like, why why doesn't anybody ask that of Janae Aiko? Why doesn't anybody say that right, of right, right, right. you know, yeah. like yeah. Rihanna? Like, do you do you think that Janae Aiko is helping thin women and petite women with their confidence? Like, it's it's just weird. It's just and weird. I, and when I thought about that question, I thought about you know um, Sarah Barterman 
And you know what w- w- she went through just because her body was was contoured. She was a black woman, and she mm-hmm. became a, a circus freak, for lack of a better word, because white America had never seen the the curves on a black woman to that degree. You know, she had the hips, she had all of it, mm-hmm. she had the dunk, she had the whole nine. Which black men, you know, like yo, that's a queen. I love that. But by white European standards, it was an uh, abnormality. Right. And 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 then I think it, it cycled down to black women like, well, if I have all of this, then I'm not fitting into society standards. So right. it's kind of shamed, which I think is is so sad when I see um, young girls, you know, made to feel like they don't fit in because they have curves or they have this or they have that. And like you said, the 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 JCP JC Penny model the bathing suit with the sunglasses yeah. in the grocery store. But then you got, you know, Luanda in the same outfit in the grocery store. And it's not as beautiful to right. some as it is with the, the blonde hair and all that. Go but ahead. Here, but here's the thing. They talk so much about our, 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 our African-American queens and their thickness and the, and the breasts and the boobs and all that. But they're going to alter their bodies to get theirs to look just like it, even from the lips down to the butt, to the breast. And that's on even on TV. Even some for years, I, dude. Forgive me. I know she's probably watching the show, but for years, I thought Dolly Parton's joints was real. For years. Wait, they're not real. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. Those aren't no. Really Dolly Parton. No, oh. but see. Ooh, So all of these years, they've been back then altering themselves and altering their bodies to look like our Af- uh, African American queens, the, with the lips. I mean, look at look look example. look example. I know that the Jenner girls are watching. I know they watching because they because I'm on the show. They always watch. They gonna I know they watching. I know Kylie. They I know Kylie and Mar- Hey Kylie. Hey girls. Listen, I know they're watching, but. When they first hit the scene, they was like pencil sticks. They were like pencil sticks. Go ahead, let me let you sip on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> they, I mean, they they were, I'm but now they worked out. They got I'm a trainer. The show. They, you know what they worked out? They checkbook, son. They got a they trainer. Worked out, they, they worked yeah, out. Yeah, they got a trainer to show them how to write their check. That's what they got. They when they got yeah. their bodies done. And now that's how you think they put in all these rappers. Did they, wasn't nobody paying attention to them when they was looking like 12 year old uh, boys. And then Dana, <laughs> Dana <laughs> I'm Chime, just being, I'm just being a hundred. You are. Dana chimed in and says black women are also doing different body augmentation as well. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of black women now that are going under the knife. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and it's unnecessary because my it thing is. is this. I think everybody has a type. And I think oftentimes we will do all these augmentations and changing all this to to attract somebody that wouldn't be attracted to us if we, you know, how we naturally look. And we end up chasing the wrong kind of individual. But if we just stay who we are, how we design, that person that likes that body style is going to see you like, yo, that's the style I like. All men don't like big breasts. You know, all men don't like big booties. You know, all men don't do that. You know, so I think the women that go out there and feel they got to do all this stuff to their body to get a man. I'm like, yo, it's a man out there that that's cool with just a handful. Right. You know, so Crystal, go ahead. Or come on, Crystal, preach, now. preach, educate us, Crystal, now. educate. Us. We are men, so educate. I us. know this is this is a wild thought because I know, but or. <laughs> Maybe these women are doing these augmentations because there's something about themselves they don't like, like. and they Boom. want to like themselves. Boom. Like, what if they don't give a good damn about the type of man that likes their type of body? Just like, I don't want the stomach. And I don't want to do my no more crunches and eat no more tuna on crackers. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got good insurance. I want to go. I want to pay the money. I want them to suck it out. I want them to bandage me up. Somebody come massage the little sutures and right. then, 
and in eight months, I want to continue my hot girl summer. Like, what if I just want to do that? And that's that's true. No, I definitely hundred percent. That's what I'm and that's saying. That's for men too. I know a lot of fellas out there that they get get, but and we don't talk about men getting augmented. It's a lot of men out there that got fake bodies. You know, so ladies, I, I, I had brother. liposuction on IG, and nobody like they talk about it for like two days, and nobody said anything. Nobody said anything, and and, and everybody was like, "Ain't no nothing wrong with a little dip tuck, little dip tuck." But then the very next day, oh, you get a weed because you want to be a white woman. You be like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it, it, it's a double. It's definitely a double standard. It is. It's it is. It a is. double standard. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't like that. I, you know, you know me. I I like. I hate when I, I hate when people talk about other people and you know make them feel bad and stuff because they're trying to beat them. You know, and that, I just I don't like that. But again, some people don't need to alter themselves. And 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 I get it. What you just said, Crystal. I get it. Maybe they don't like their nose or don't like their. You know, whatever. But it's some people are naturally beautiful and don't really need to do anything. And I think they just need someone to tell them that. But, and that, a lot of people, but, but that beauty. But again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Like you just yeah. said, we all yeah. have yeah. different tastes and different likes. Got you. Got but you. sometimes it's just, and a lot of time, a hundred percent of the time, a hundred percent of the time. I know y'all like to think patriarchal society and all that other stuff. I know y'all like to think that everything a woman does in her life is for the attention of men but sometimes it's just i want to do it i don't i don't care if you look at me and go damn her titties big her abs are flat she got nice hips i don't want to do these crunches okay <laughs> period I, i'm doing this for me because i don't want to do i don't want to do it i That's don't want to do it yeah, That's, fair. That's, fair. That's fair That's fair. and that's why i want, into I, I want to buy because they look because, like I'm that little nip and tuck. That's a new song. Because when, you, because, because when you have huge breasts, you your bras are eighty dollars for that ugly shit. When when you have normal size breasts, you could get like thirty bras for fifteen dollars. Cute ones. So maybe maybe I just want to take them down so okay. I can stand up straight and my straps don't dig into my shoulders. It ain't because I'm trying to be on love and hip hop. Right. You I just want to take, take back. I'm just trying, yeah, I'm just trying to take trying to save the your pressure back. off my lumbar column. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. That's a new perspective. I can I can respect that. I yeah, and Dana said it best. Be be in relationship with yourself. You're right. I, I respect that, Crystal. I respect so it is two sides to this. Some do it. Because they trying to appease society, and some do it just to help <laughs> help their lumbar column. You know, yes. I, that's a good point. That's really a good point. I, okay, okay, touche for that. Touche for that. Hey, y'all, we are gonna take a really quick commercial. We'll be back in sixty seconds to do these last two questions with our special guest, Crystal Bubman. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Go get a sip of right water. There. Don't go nowhere. Go ahead. <laughs> With our special guest Crystal Bubbling, thank y'all for rolling with us. We're talking about all kind of stuff, actually. Just well, I've learned a whole lot. My eyes have been opened. Women ain't always doing it for you, bruh. 
<laughs> it ain't always about you. So you try to get your ego stroked. No, nah, she's doing this for her. So like they right. said, be in love with yourself, you know, and she want to have a healthy back. Period. Yes. I love Y'all it. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't she understand. Want, she, want, she want to jog without smacking the heck out of herself. Oh, right. Right. I get it. <laughs> Tell you something. You don't know. You know how you do something in the house and get embarrassed. You know, it's nobody around. You don't know embarrassment like getting hit in the eye with your own titty. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just be confused for a Good. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't get mad over yourself. Who you get mad at? I get it. Lesson, lesson learned. I've been educated. I've been educated. All right, let's get these last two questions. Kwame, what's the next question? What's the next question? Come on, village. Let's answer this one. When it comes to sexual expression, are black women shamed more than white women? And I think we kind of covered that, but Crystal, what do you think? Are black women shamed more than white women? I think a few episodes ago, me and Dana talked about this. We showed the, the Meg and Cardi B's performance yeah. on the BET Awards, and then we showed Britney and Madonna and Christina doing their lip lock tongue kiss on right. the MTV Awards and was like, well, Britney and all of them, that went viral. It was beautiful. It was erotic. Right, but Megan Cardi did it. It was nasty, disgusting, and lewd. So, what do you think, Crystal? Uh, I definitely think we get shamed more, and I think black women get shamed the most by black women. And yes. I just hate it. I just yeah. hate it because it's like it. It's like it's not. I don't. I don't know why you do it. I don't know if you think it's gonna save you or provide you some protection or or what because it's like. And it never matches up, right? Like, Britney kissed Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears. Cardi and Meg did a flip over each other. If that was part of <clears throat> some Olympic uh, floor routine with <laughs> the damn ribbons and whatnot, they'd be talking about all oh, the artistic and gymnastic ability. And it wasn't like they ended with, like, their faces in each other's cooch. Like, right. it mm -hmm. was... It was a dance step, or like y'all remember? Uh, I don't know. I love TikTok, the busted challenge. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah yeah yeah. Now there were there were some uh, adult entertainers that did it, but when it started, <laughs> uh, it was just like it was a kid. It you're was busted. Fun. It was fun. Yeah, you you busted, and then you drop down, and you in some cute, and you twerking, and people were like, "Oh my god, you shaking ass on TikTok!" Like, but y'all be watching them whole when white girls whole pole dance routines for fitness. I don't. Yeah, uh, you're right. I, yeah, you know what right. I'm yeah. saying. No. I'm. The, if she, she got on a little a skirt or jeans or whatever, like it's it's a booty shake. It's not a, you know, she, she's not like busting lips open and right. I don't know tagging it with Barney or something. So it like the energy never matches when it comes to us, and it's that whole mother whore dichotomy. And that's I think that's interesting how you said that black women do it to each other. You know how, how does that how does that affect you or has that ever affected you? Um, it, it, it does, you know, it's a church thing. It's a, you know, it's a, which is all, all, all things we've just been programmed to think one way about right, from right. an a, a, a oppressive source, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So people have to unlearn, you know, and they have to, and they have to want to. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it just, it just sucks and you, you kind of have to assert yourself, Right. you kind of have to just really be like, you know, well, this is me and this is what it is. And, you know, within reason of, of safe, danger, you know, safe safety for yourself. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's sad to see because it's so repressive. Like it holds us back because, mm -hmm. you know, there are people that will be like, wanted to be a little girl that wanted to be an astronaut or something. And now she thinks it's men's work or, you know what I mean? Like, right. Right, right. You don't know who you're stifling um, when you when you do that, and and they don't realize they've been stifled themselves. You know, they hate yeah. uh, they they 
doesn't the gospel community always get mad at uh is it Leandra J? Le- <laughs> Le- Leandria. Yeah, uh, Leandria. Leandria. Yeah, Leandria. Yeah. They stay mad at her because she drink and she cuss, but she love the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. But mm-hmm. then you, you know, up there doing all kinds of filthy stuff to keep your husband who works so hard and is a man of God, you know, or you finding out, you know, they got caught with a little child behind, like T.I. T.I. was literally taking his daughter to have her hymen checked whilst <laughs> drugging and having orgies with women, like Sir, the cognitive dissonance. We wasn't gonna open that door, Crystal. Oh, <laughs> but thank you though. Let me, let me just pull it. I'm gonna pull it shut. I'm sorry. I mean, it. sorry. Hey, no. Put that back in the pod cabinet later. Put that back in the pod cabinet. Allegedly, allegedly, so, uh, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> now get my show canceled. <laughs> Hy- hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically. Right. But isn't it sick that we rumor has it that upon further isn't research? It we, isn't it sick that we have to say allegedly about the case, but not about his child? Because he told us he this is what he that. does. He did tell he us. He told us that. himself. So I think so. So it's safe to say that 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 creates an environment. Um, so so men play a part in this as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we play mm-hmm. a part because this whole shit what? is set up for you. It it's really set up for you. It ain't set up yeah. for us. Up until what the the fifties, sixties, we couldn't have jobs. Right, like legally, right. we were right. property. Right. So yeah, right. it is right. It was real handmaiden's tale, you right? Know, it was, it, it, yeah, you do we do right? Yeah, Jane patriarchy. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. Let, all right, let's see what I forgot. What the last question is. Let's see what this last question is. What what is okay. it? Let's see. Let's see. Because Crystal getting the females all riled up. <laughs> what needs to evolve in terms of America's thinking about sex and sexuality? Because we know America is, is very prudish when it comes to sex. Sexuality, you know, women, all that. You go anywhere else in the world. I mean, it is real. Just it's, it's real whatever. calm and it's real like... relaxed. But you come in here, and it's kind of, you know, I mean, some cultures, of course, is very staunch. I've been yes. to those cultures, but then some is more liberated when it comes to sexual expression and just allowing folks to be. So, if you think you think of America loosening the reins a bit, women will feel a lot more liberated. I think if, well, it's never going to become a thing. It's never going to be a, become a thing to loosen the reins because that's that's like saying, uh, like we have to be given permission to be no, that's what you're saying. sexually yeah. liberated, and that yeah. defeats the whole point of liberation. Like, I'm not asking for permission. I'm gonna right. do what I what I want to do. What needs to change is that people need to stop asking, acting like they're better criminals than other criminals. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I don't say I didn't say sin because I don't want you know. Sometimes you say sin, and non the non church folks they they be out. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Sometimes right. we say sin, sinners get all excited. But I'll just say crime. I love that. I love that. Yeah. My yeah. Just yeah. because just because I robbed you and you punched him, we still in this holding cell. So just because don't don't stop acting like, oh, I can, you know, I can stick a, a lamp in my ass and and walk around the house for three hours and call that a kink. But you wearing a bikini and Ralph's. And being two hundred pounds, now that that is offensive. <laughs> you just out here, you just out here around the peaches, dressed like that. What about the children? Meanwhile, you're <laughs> at home. 
Right. The lamp you had is at home because you can come to Ralph dressed, you know, proper and prim, but you just had a lamp, you know, chugged up. The lamp got bed. the lamp got chip stains on it. Your son seen his daughter in the bed in the in the in the bathroom when you come home from work. Oh God! But, but God forbid somebody uh, put pink hair and uh, put their wig on their toddler and take a picture. You're right. right exactly. Your ah! God forbid, mom jokingly put her little wig on her son's head. Oh, you about to ruin the black community. Hold on. I got to, I, I like to asphyxiate myself while I masturbate. I'll be right back. Like, what is y'all doing? What is y'all doing? That's not what, that's not what spoons are for, sir. Calm down. Let Megan twerk. Calm down. Right. No shade. Touche. I mean, I mean, I yeah, man. I mean, I love how you just broke down the the jail cell. Broke it down. We all in the same jail cell. We all in the same jail cell. We, we did different crimes, but we all and we in go, jail. And we gonna go to different prisons depending on what we did. But guess what? We all got a record. Now none of us can go. Period. We are now all felons. We're all felons. We all we all got a misdemeanor. We all got something now. So cut it out. Just, like just you cut too. it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Crystal, I want to give you some time to highlight how folks can find you. All right. Oh. Her. So I'm finna give you the whole, you finna get the whole screen. Pump yourself up. Bring like her forward. You know Bring her forward. Do it, Crystal. Do it. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for having me, Dana and Dante. It was great chopping it up with you. Thank you to everybody that was commenting and getting in the conversation. I, you can find me at Crystal Bubbling, just like it says on the little thing here. Yeah, uh, at Crystal Bubbling everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and my merch is at bubblingbrand.com. Or you can go to at Bubbling Brand on Instagram and, uh, you know, feel free to shop with me. I'm an independent creative, so uh, I ain't got no job. So this is my job. <laughs> feel free to purchase a T-shirt or a mask. I know they run going out of style, but, you know, whatever. We'll figure it out. Guys, that edible just kicked in. I'm not even going to lie. But thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love talking Good with y'all. Uh, yeah, gotta, I'm sorry. It did. It just hit. I want to I wanna further unpack yes. the, the, the criminal aspect. You don't want to further okay. unpack that. So I got to get you back on here. You know, bubbling brown products. <laughs> you need a whole theme song for the I bubbling like brand. Oh, oh, I got to write that down. You didn't give me this. Right. Ooh, bubbling okay. brown products. Okay. All <laughs> yeah, right, write that jingle. Good. <laughs> Chris, we're gonna have you back on the Dante show. We're gonna do a part two of this. We're gonna uh, keep unpacking this because I think I mean you really educated me. You know, I thought all women did what they had to do for men to get a brother and all that kind of stuff, but I see it different now. Your back hurt. You know, chopping yeah. girls down a bit. You know, you want a cute like, bra. Look, like, look, look. It's a dick. It's a dick <laughs> in my body. <laughs> Somebody like, oh, her arm dirty. My arm not dirty. It's a dick. It's Jeez. shadows and light and valleys. Oh my you god! Me? Since I was thirteen, dude, she said Since it's I was a 13. dent. It's a dent. My shit go <laughs> <laughs> like a speed bump. Yes, it's a ditch. <laughs> it's a ditch. You gonna wreck a your trick. car? You gonna wreck your car? Let me go holler at Doctor Miami. <laughs> Oh my God! Thank you, Crystal, so much. I'm gonna reach out and get you back on the show. Back on the show, y'all. Make awesome. sure to check out the Bubbling brand. Get some products. Get some masks before they go out of style. And let's support Crystal Bubbling. Thank you, Crystal. Thank, Thank you, you, Crystal. Peace out. Hey, y'all, thanks for rocking with us on tonight. We really appreciate y'all. If you have not done so, please make sure to check me out on Instagram at Dante underscore Morrison, Dante underscore Morrison. Follow me, follow me, follow me. I try to post as much as I possibly can, but you know, sometimes I forget. So make sure to follow me and we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We thank y'all so much. Dana. Hey, follow me on Instagram at DNA716. 
Again, we love you all. Thank you all for following us. And we dare not get out of here. I know he'll give us at least one minute to let us say we have to spread love. Instead of spreading lies, we have to spread love. Instead of spreading love. <laughs> Hey, again, make sure you reach out to somebody to make sure that they're okay. Even if you think they're doing okay, reach out to them. Spread some love, send a card, send a letter, uh, send a text, write them a, 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 a nice little note, something, anything. Just make sure they're okay. A, a hi goes a long way. A simple hello goes a long way. And again, we love you all. Thank you all for tuning in. All right, so we'll see y'all tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, who do we have? We have Dahlia Kinsey. Dahlia Kinsley on the Dante Show. And Village, you know without y'all, we just be two dudes having a conversation. So we appreciate y'all more than y'all realize. Thank you for rocking with us through the good times and the bad times. We love y'all. We mean it. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. Yo, if you have not subscribed to the Dante Show on YouTube yet, I'm going to punch you in your mouth. Shame on y'all. Ebony Magazine, right. Jet Magazine, getting folks. Y'all subscribe to Porn Hub. Y'all subscribe to, to, to all those chat sites. Y'all subscribe right. to everything else. But just subscribe to the Dante Show. Subscribe to the Dante Show on YouTube, y'all. We love y'all. We need y'all likes. We're trying to, we trying to get somewhere. We're yeah. trying to be the next. We're trying to make it. We're trying to thrive and survive and climb. And we right. need y'all to do that. All right? So Walt, Jenny, Pam, Bridget, you know, Malik. You know, who's on the stage? Malik, I'm going to tell, tell you like this. Hey, you ever Bridget, watch that show? You, you know, ever watch that show, The Circle? You know, yeah, the circle, yeah. Malik is not Malik. Oh, Malik's not Malik? Malik is the son of, that's his mama. That's his mama chiming in on his, his page. She didn't know how to create her own page. Oh, well, hi, mama. <laughs> Subscribe, mama. She is. I'm going I'm to walk her through it. Subscribe. So what? <laughs> So we will see y'all tomorrow night on the Dante Show. All right, so appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Please stay safe. Wear your mask. Social distance. Forget what the CDC says. It is still a pandemic going on, all right? Do what you got to do. Use wisdom. We love y'all. Yes, see you tomorrow night. All right, Peace. take care. God bless.